is ready for this one. Gregor Townsend then hasn't sought to change too much, albeit he slightly shifted the dynamic in the Scottish back row. Former captain Jamie Ritchie handed the number six shirt to replace Matt Fagerson alongside current co-captain Glasgow's Rory Darge, who topped the tackle count against France in round two. Two for Lotto and Jones formed the centre partnership for the 14th time in 16 tests, while the two further changes come in the back three. Blair Kinghorn fit again to play fullback. Kyle Stone retaking his spot on the wing after the birth of his daughter on the day of the France match. For England, well, Steve Borthwick makes five changes since their narrow round two win against Wales. Two changes in the pack where Ellis Genge and Dan Cole are promoted from the bench to start. Ben Earl at number eight with fond memories of winning here on his England debut, coming off the back of his player of the match performance two weeks ago. In the backs, more tinkering. Injury to Alex Mitchell sees Danny Kerr start on his 99th cap. Ollie Lawrence installed into the inside centre channel in place of Fraser Dingwall. But perhaps the biggest surprise of this selection is at fullback, George Furbank. <laughs> A fixture rich in history that captivates rugby fans of all nations. Scotland against England, and away we go. And already, Ben Earl, player of the match against Five. Wales, packing down at the back. Set. Talking about his memories of winning here, he said, I wouldn't have put me on with 15 minutes to go, but Eddie Jones did for Sam Underhill. He's playing alongside Underhill now, and here goes Earl away for Kerr and Ford. The little closer ball, this can work nicely for England, the offload, and Fairbank is in! Well, that might silence some of the questions about Fairbank's inclusion at the expense of Freddie Stewart. England were under a little bit of pressure, but look at Ben Earl, he gets away from the scrum. Danny Kerr got a space to go into. Defenders committed. George Ford takes it right to the line, gives it off the hip to Daly. And Daly, simple pass to Furbank. But it's this pass here, it's that pass there whereby you've got Slade right at the front end. Daly gets beyond, and it's a walk in for Furbank. Smiling from ear to ear, his first touch of the afternoon, dare I say it. And England are out of the blocks, and what confidence they'll get from that. Not an awful lot of time for Roots to turn the around ball. there. But the Exeter Chiefs man did yeah, well, and now England have a penalty advantage. So Slade looked for the little short ball to try and find Earl, but he was well chopped down. Russell was there to watch it. Now the little dink through will come to nothing, so England can come back and take the central-placed penalty in the championship so far. No problem. Meat and drink to a kicker. Folks! Set, I think this might be Scotland's first set piece scrum. Point! Putin. That's a, whereby, let's, let's see if they actually get away. I think they've maybe had a free kick for, for the early push from Eng England. It will get away for White. Tui Pilotti, first receiver, and finds an immediate hole for Hugh Jones. And Jones is getting on his bike. Tackled over the top, but manages to keep the ball alive. Duan van der Berber so often the destroyer of English hearts. Player of the match against England a year ago with two tries. Gets Scotland onto the board. But it all comes in the midfield. Two Pilotu, little short ball to Jones. The shooter out of the line, Slade picks the wrong man. There's the ball off the ground. Duan van der Merwe from Hugh Jones throws the dummy lightning ball amidst the fray. Through he goes. Scotland responds. Scotland's first foray into England's 22. And it brings about five points. Hugh Jones was in acres of space. Simple working of the two centres. It's an no, absolute no. lottery at the breakdown at the minute. Both teams throwing bodies in. Knock on advantage. Ford, England Over. a little flat-footed. Not really getting going. Lawrence eventually there. No Use one there it. to play scrum half, but Tommy Freeman eventually will oblige. Genge. Little pop pass. Care Ford right down low, but then for Itoji, who is Pounds everything but low. By England. No more, no more. Scotland players trying to bowl as many England shirts out of the way. Ford. Oh, and it's come off fur back again. We are just seeing the handling errors. But now Van der Berber given a chance on the outside. Slade can't get hold of him. And it's Duan Van der Berber. Can you believe it? Hitting the line, here's the pass, Ford. Hits off the head. 
of Furbank, good hands by Jones, and then he just sees, I think it's Earl in front of him, holding the white channel, and he just thinks, one on one, give me a chance. Slade does his best to get back and make the desperate tackle, but Duhan van der Merwe, the pace, the power, the class and the gas finishes it off. Scotland turnover, one pass try, and they have a lead that you could struggle to justify at this stage, but <laughs> there's not a Scottish fan in this group. Darge over it and then with the carry into Chesham. And now a penalty advantage for an offside. Not a good central position for Scotland to work with an advantage. Kinghorn looks for a crossfield kick pass for Van der Merwe. Nought will come. Uh, first pillar, I think so it's they six will have the chance from a central position. I think it's two offside. Russell continuing a 100% kicking record in the 2024 Guinness Six Nations. Slow ball for England. Ford is in the pocket for a drop goal. He fancies three points to keep England's score ticking over and he'll get them. From the opposition and give yourself the opportunity to clear the lines, it's an absolute delight. Well, Scotland have won the line up where England would have been hoping that was their moment. Russell's looked for the kick over the top, charge down. By Oli Lawrence, oh, but Cam Redpath has absolutely slipped the net here in the middle, using the footwork. George Ford did just enough to stay in that. Now Scotland have got room on the outside. Van der Merwe took oh. the kick. Oh, it's sublime from Scotland. What an into Finn Russell's hand super quickly and the kick pass it is perfection the brush strokes on the canvas Finn Russell Martin they are delighted to have the Tigers oh, man back is. fit and ready and there will be a penalty here Slade has said that it might be worth trying to come back down this side he's only oh, handed the ball sense. over to Stain so we come back so we come back for the penalty that England had and George Ford We'll slot three points. England's first points of the second half. Makes another one for Scotland. Russell ties it up all on, and Hugh Jones manages to get on that outside arc enough to put the chip through. It's into the in goal. Daly kicks it back, but there was a penalty against Ben Earl. Four from four so far for Russell. This to take Scotland. A little further away from England. Cancels out the George Ford penalty. Goal! England Release! under pressure again. Change made at scrum half. George Horn onto the field. Didn't get off the bench against France. Ball laid back. Spencer. Oh! Swings the boot. It's on its way. The flags are up. Scotland up to 30. But plenty thinking it could tip the other way. But Russell six from six, and Scotland looking in control. Without well, doubt, other than that penalty from Ford, yeah, albeit Scotland will be desperately disappointed not to have gathered that kickoff. Yeah, it's OJ managing to get okay. hold of the loose ball. How the story could take another twist and turn if England could get themselves a second try. There for Tackle. Furbank Scotland, again, who's Scotland. just capable of asking that question yeah, of the defence. Oh, it's there for Faye Bosom! Completely untouched! The excellent Chiefs man! Danny Kerr calls him a breath of fresh air, wanting the ball, wanting to learn. Oh, yeah, yeah, quick know. score! <laughs> well, it may be a breath of fresh air, he's left the Scottish defence grasping at air there. I think it's Cam Redpath in the guard position, but I think he's left by Blair Kinghorn. It was the late movement by Faye Waboso, though. I think Cam Redpath's not got the chance to look outside himself. Ben Spencer does just enough to be able to hold. Once upon a time, I thought that would have been a, well, a fair I, I, tackle. Yeah, well, I was, well, well certainly, but confirmation on screen then. Unsurprisingly, given his intervention, that Duan van der Merwe is to get a Six Nations player of the match in the process of being awarded it. 
the referee has brandished a yellow card. On the outside here, just on Freeman, you just see he gets underneath the ball, lifts him up, dumps him on his back. They are just waiting to have their moment to celebrate. Finn Russell kicks it into the stands, and Scotland have done it. They retain the Calcutta.